Shalom and welcome to Celebration Church Johannesburg's Victory Business Forum. Uh, this month, uh, the month of uh, May, we, we, we are excited to gather together with you and we trust that uh, you'll find this uh, session useful. I know I want to start with a disclaimer uh, or rather an apology. Uh, last month, I'd said that we would start talking about um, how to raise finances for your business, for your project. Uh, but we have had a review of the, the plans. We are just continuing to uh, talk about um, the one more pathway before we get into talking about uh, the opportunities and the possibilities in terms of uh, uh, financing what we, the ventures that we have so uh, we spoke about uh, starting businesses and today I want to look at uh, a different pathway to wealth creation, which is through buying a business. So the, you will notice that um, there are so many businesses for sale, particularly uh, in South Africa right now. And I think you will see a lot of uh, businesses which are for sale. So you can start your own business right from scratch or you can say, okay, why should I start? There's somebody who is already disposing and uh, I can take that as an opportunity. The businesses are sold all the time. It's an exit mechanism for a lot of people. Uh, the critical thing in uh, pursuing purchasing a business is that you want to consider why is the person selling? Um, are they struggling for some reason? And is that reason something that you can manage? Uh, can you do better on it? Do you see an opportunity? Or it could be somebody who is retiring. They, the children is, have left uh, the country and they are not, or they're not interested in the business. And the person is old, the shareholder, they want to sell. Or it may be uh, for any of uh, different reasons. So it's important to know why they are selling. And then uh, if you think there is value, you, you can uh, pursue that and, and buy a business. You see, there, there's some advantages to when you compare between uh, buying a business that is already running and uh, starting a business from, from zero. You know, obviously, once you buy a business that is uh, already running on condition that is a going concern, on condition it's actually running, you find that there are fewer surprises. If you are starting a business from zero, you are trying to pilot a, a concept. It may the market may not receive it, but if the business is running, it's stable, it's, it's cash flow, then you know that there is uh, uh, there are fewer surprises. There there may be a few problems to discover, and you may need to 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 just. Uh, clean them up but you are you, you see the fatal flaw in a raw startup that they may exist that you never discover until you try when you have already put in your money so there is a less risk generally talking about when you buy a business that's already exists of course it's conditional to you having done a due diligence having studied and looked at the the business so some of the advantages that you see when you have to acquire a business that's already existing. You see, you are assured of revenue generation. You are assured that the model actually works because particularly if uh, the, the, the owner allows you to see verifiable financials and you can actually go visit the business and it's existing, it's not wise to buy a business that has closed down. You, you want a business that is ongoing, that is running, because then you are assured of revenue generation. You see, in most cases, existing businesses generate revenue from day one of acquisition. But new businesses may take more time to even commence revenue. So you think about it. If, if I buy a business today, from when I walk in tomorrow, there are clients which are still walking in and out. So there is revenue generation that is already going. Whereas if I'm starting a business, it, I may need to market, I may need to do this. It takes a little bit longer for me to get to a point where I can generate revenue. So you, you need to be aware of that, that you're buying a business that is in existence, you have an assured revenue generation. You see, but having, you see, having a good revenue base enables the buyer of the existing business to generate income faster than new startups. So that's a, a definite advantage. Of course, there are some conditions that are there, 
there are things that you need to look at. You need to be careful about certain things. You need to have a good due diligence to be sure that you are getting into the right place. The other advantage of buying an existing business is that in a sense, there is less effort that is required for it to start running. You save on a lot of pure startup time, efforts and money. You see, when you are starting up a business, you're going to have to establish the business entity. You're going to have to find a location. You're going to have to deal with legal issues. You're going to talk about, talk about insurance. You're talking about marketing. You're talking about uh, how do I name it? What, uh, where do I put the signs? What are the, the ads I need? Uh, I need to hire staff and you're hiring staff before you even start generating income. You see, the person you are employing, they are not going to say, oh, I know you are starting up and you don't have, they already have a certain level of salary that they expect and those uh, the expenses need to be met. You need to set up payroll, you need to do all these kinds of things. So there's a lot of effort and energy that is required for you to start a business. Whereas if you get a business that is already ongoing, that is running, so a lot of those, you know that already the cash flow is there, things are happening. So that is, that, that is something that, is, uh, that you notice when you start a business. You also know that when you, when you start, when you buy a business, there's an existing customer base that's already there. You, the existing business will have a reasonable customer base. So assuming it's a business that, is, that has been performing uh, and these can be transferred to the buyer. So this is a very good thing you, you know, here is the thing, when, you, when you're starting a business, you go, you talk to your friends, you talk to potential customers, and even if you do a customer survey, they will tell you, oh yeah, we, 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 we will support you, we'll do this, particularly friends, be careful about friends, they'll always tell you we'll support you until you actually start, and then you realize they, they, won't, they won't support you. So the client or customer acquisition, building a customer base for a, a startup is challenging. But when you are buying an existing business, the customer base is already there. But of course, it's going to be important for you to confirm that the customer base actually exists. But, but generally speaking, if, if they, you, particularly if you are buying a business, I, I, I'm more interested in businesses which are not in liquidation because businesses which are in liquidation, unless you, are, you, you have a lot of money, they are going to need to be, there are lots of things that you need to do. But if it's a business that's being sold because somebody is retiring or the, the owner has just uh, uh, died or, or, or something, but the business is still going or, or they, they're just trying to exit because they, they, they're emigrating, for example, they may, they may be leaving the country or it may be many reasons, but five out the reason because the reason why they are selling will tell you whether it's a viable business. But more importantly, you want to establish that it actually has a customer base. And I can't emphasize enough the issue of customer base and understanding why the person is selling. I, I, I remember we, you know, that this is one thing you have to be careful about. You see, you have to be careful that you can retain the customers. Because you can be told a shown a customer base which is uh, but which is too linked to the to the to the to the sellers that you once you acquire it they, they will disappear. I, I remember we we actively considered at some point buying a haulage business, uh, which was based in Blauai, and everything looked good and we we were very excited. So when we we as as we were considering this purchase. We were concerned at some point that we, we saw that there was a variant of the same organization that had been started in South Africa. So in our doing the due diligence, we realized that the founder of that business had relocated to South Africa and he had started another business. And now when we asked, they said, no, 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 he's not involved in that business. Sorry, he's not an owner, he's just a, a, a consultant, he's helping them set up and all those kinds of things. And we, but we, we were concerned and in doing our due diligence, we then realized that this company was actually working with the company we wanted to acquire. And it was taking care of most of the regional business. And now, we, when we pressed, they, they keep, kept insisting that, no, no, they are not related. Fortunately, the deal did not go through. But our concern was actually validated because we then realized that actually these guys were uh, transferring their business to South Africa. So they wanted to sell us a shell, just uh, the trucks 
and we would not be able to retain the profitable clients who were the, 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 the international customers or the regional customers. So we were going to, to, to acquire a heavy business, heavy, to pay a, a loan for the, for the repayment of the business and yet lose the most profitable customers. So it's important if you are buying a business, you satisfy yourself that the anger clients, the anger customers are inheritable. And even if it's necessary, actually go and visit them if you can while you're doing your due diligence and to talk to them and say, how do you see the business? What's happening with this business? How do you like your, your, the support that you are having with the business? If you, if they, and they, they can give you an indicator to say they are interested and they, they appreciate, they will support, particularly if you are keeping most of the key competences within the business. So it's important. So don't assume that you, the existing customer base will necessarily be yours, but you need to investigate it. You need to pursue it. You need to make sure that you can secure. If you need to enter into contracts, for example, if there's some real big anger clients who are very important, you actually want to enter into agreements with them before you make the purchase. Because if you don't have that agreement, if you don't have that understanding, if they move with their business, then you, you are done. So you, you just bought a shell. Is this making sense? So it's, it's beautiful to have an existing customer base because it will reduce the expenditure on marketing compared to rather that you'd incur if you're starting a business. But it's important that you need to know that you can actually retain your customers. But that, that's, that, that having been said, you still need to be aware that you see as a buyer, you can build on the existing clientele. Whereas a startup is starting from zero. Day one, you are starting the business. You open your business. There is no walk-in. There is no business. But if you are in, inheriting a business and you have a buyer bought a business, you are going to have that continuity. You are going to have clients that are already there. So you want to assess the robustness of those clients. You want to assess their willingness to continue with you. That is is critical in terms of acquiring a business. The, the other advantage that you have when you, you buy a business as a source of wealth creation is that you have an existing supply chain. What do I mean by that? You already have suppliers who are there, people who have been supplying this business. So establishing a supply chain is a time-consuming phase of new business. I mean, trying to find who are the credible suppliers, who are the people who can supply on the terms you are happy with. Sometimes you can be in a business where raw materials are scarce. The supply contracts are essential for successful operations. So you want to be sure that you, 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 you have the good supply contracts. And you, you need to, to, to be, to, to, this will help you if you are buying a business like that, because it already has all that supply chain in place. But it's important important, like I said, in terms of the customers, the same thing with the supply chain. You want to be able to visit some of the, the suppliers, talk to them, let them know the interest that you have in this business. Because once you do, you'll assess their willingness and readiness to continue doing business with the new owners. Because that is important. Don't assume that they will continue supplying you. As a matter of fact, I, th this happened to us. There are some clients who are really sensitive to new ownership. I, I remember when we bought uh, a, a business in Blauai, a steel fabricating business, and we, it was about the third largest steel fabricating business in the city, if, if I remember well, way back in 2010. And we, we, we went in and um, we bought this business. And some of the uh, anger supply chain uh, clients became hesitant to deal with us because we bought it from a, a, a retire, a, a, the, the, the owner had died. And when he died, the wife ran the business for a while. And then uh, she was getting married and she was leaving the country. So she decided to sell the business. The, the children were not interested in the business. They've left the country. And so we, we went in and we, we acquired the business, but we made the mistake, which I'm telling you not to make. We did not check up on the supply chain. We did not even follow the clients to see would they be uh, willing to do business with us. Suddenly, we started having difficulty uh, with some of the suppliers. Only to realize later that this was like a, an old boys club, a white men's club. And business, the business was doing well because it was part of a fraternity. 
Now, the moment we came in as blacks, as uh, indigenous people, the, 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 we, we only discovered later that uh, these guys sent to their procurement, uh, uh, procurement officers and said, you know what, we understand this business has changed ownership. We, we are not comfortable with the new ownership. So let's slow down our, 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 our contracts with them. We don't know whether they will be able to, to actually pay us. And that affected us significantly. So that's uh, something that you need to be careful about. You need to check on. You know, the reason is because suppliers generally are hesitant to provide discounts or higher credit facilities to new businesses or even to new owners. So, but if you are buying a business that is existing and you, you talk to the suppliers and you realize that they are willing to support you, you actually get good discounts. You'll have a higher credit facility for, for you rather than when you start a new business. So this is important. These are advantages that you find. So it's important to, to understand that that supply chain is important. You need to understand it. You need to, to rope them in before you make your final offer. Make sure they are on your side. Make sure they, are support. they have incredible support. Because once you are starting, you know, because you are a new guy, you don't even know how things are going to work. You are going to have problems. You have competitors. And sometimes competitors, if you are coming in as a new guy, competitors can actually say, say to threaten the suppliers and say, if you supply this guy, we are going to withdraw our business. I remember there was a, there, in Zimbabwe, there was a time when uh, uh, the, the, there's a story told, and I think it has been uh, validated. One time I used it in a class, and uh, somebody who was involved in that organization actually came. I think it was Delta then, which was with their chipuk with their opaque beer. And the, there's some guy who had started their own uh, beer in the in the lower fields in the Chirez area, Triangle Chirez area in, in Zimbabwe. And this guy was doing very well. And people were saying, I, I don't know anything about beer, I don't drink. But uh, and I don't apologize for not drinking. I'm so happy that I don't drink. Thank God I'm redeemed. But, but this guy, the people were saying that his beer was very good. So he was beginning to make inroads against Delta Shibuku. And, but Delta used its unfair advantage over suppliers. It went to the major suppliers and said, guys, we are not happy with you supplying this young guy. Now, if you are going to supply this guy, you make a choice. You can either supply Delta or you can supply this guy. If you continue supplying this guy, we are going to withdraw. And the moment they did that, it killed that business. So when you are a small guy who is coming and you are starting from zero, you can have those supply chain issues. But if you, already, if you are buying a business that is in existence, then you have an advantage over the supply chain. But more importantly, like I want to keep emphasizing is that you need to make sure you lock in the suppliers and you ensure that you study the supplier contracts. Do they have escalation clauses if there's a change of management? Do they terminate if there's a change of management? Or can you go and negotiate a good deal? Can you actually have the seller help you negotiate? Because the seller wants to buy, he's motivated to, to sell. So, so he's motivated for you to buy because they want to sell. So you can bring them along and say, look, I want to secure the contract. So go and help me and we negotiate contracts before you actually take over. So you see, if you, you are purchasing an existing business, the existing supply chain can be used, can be utilized to accentuate your marketing capabilities of the business because now you already have people who believe in you. You are not starting from zero. So do you, do you see, I, I want to, to talk about this primarily from a perspective, very simply of comparing. I'm, I'm not undoing entrepreneurship starting from zero. It's great. There's a place for that. If you are called, if you feel that this is what you want to do and you, you can't get an existing business, go for it. But I'm saying you can create wealth through acquiring existing businesses. You see, if you are good with numbers, if you can uh, analyze, you may actually find an underpriced business where the seller is motivated uh, because they no longer want to be involved in business or like we said, they're, they're failing health or they are retiring or they have uh, other plans. That seller, because they, they, they've been involved in the business so long and they, they just want out, they want to cash out. They, they, and particularly the older ones, they are, they're not really trying to 
to, to disinvest here, to put money elsewhere. So they, they may not have valued the property well. They, they, they may not have valued the business well. So when you examine the books, you determine the value and you think there is value at purchase. And if you are buying a business, make sure you make your money right at purchase. Make sure that you buy an underpriced, undervalued business. Make sure that uh, the, the, it's a business that is uh, continuity, that is uh, going somewhere that is value. And when you see that, you can actually get, get it cheaply. Another advantage is that you see when you acquire a business that is existing, it's a, it is an existing track record. And businesses with existing track record and they have a, that they have a beneficial positive past performance, they, you, you have a good advantage if you acquire that business because you have a, a strong base in terms of potential business, potential customer, potential supply chain, which you have talked about, so that you can grow the business faster because there is a track record. You see, a good business history can increase the likelihood of a successful operation and ensure that finance is easier to obtain. You see, if the business is already running, it's easier for you to get financing. The banks will support you. They, they, they will come on board and they will support you because you have a track record. You can imagine if you are, you are coming in, in a, to a business and you are saying, look, I am, I'm starting a new business. You have no track record. There are credibility issues and all these kinds of things. They can cause problems. And then those problems will make it difficult for you to, uh, to, to, to access financing. And people are, because of, of I mean, as you know, uh, most... Um, Entrepreneurial startups, they have a 95% failure rate in the first five years. So financier, funders are a little bit skeptical. But it's easier to get funders, whether it is the banks, whether it is other shareholders who are coming to join you in the business. When it is a track record, when it is running, they, 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 they love that because it has minimal risk. You see, and, and, and buying a business which is ongoing, you see, you can evaluate risk. You can look at the market, you can look at the track record and say, yeah, I think we can assess this risk. But if you are starting, your, your risk assessment is really theoretical. So when you are looking at the risk, you want to look at, are there internal problems? Is there a bad reputation? or bad relationship with employees? Is um, the systems well? Do they have good relationships with, uh, with suppliers? Do they have good relationship with the clients? Or if they don't have a good relationship, do you think you can improve on the relationship? Can you invest in trying to improve that, that relationship? If you think you can do that, then it's worth it for you to go and buy that business. But there are some businesses which are very difficult to to deal with if you acquire them. Uh, because if you, there's a loss of an existing owner, it could be very difficult, particularly if you are thinking of uh, professional practice. Because you, you need to know how that person did in the relationship they had with people, and then you can build on it. For example, I know we, we, we bought a practice in Blauayo, and when we bought it, we, we, we put in uh, systems, we improved it, we renovated, and we managed to retain a lot of the clients. I also sold the practice when I retired. And, and, uh, and um, um, amazingly, a lot of people did not even give, some people stayed and they loved, the, the dentist who took over was an excellent practitioner. But there's some people just said, because there's a change of ownership, they left. So you need to be, to assess all of those. Because some people are more committed to the previous owner than to you. So you need to be able to assess risk. It's important when you are buying a business assess the risks. They, 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 of course, there's minimal risk compared to a startup, but still you need to examine the different risks. Look at the operational risks. Look at the business risks. Look at the technical risks, the financial risks, the commercial risks. You see, you need to analyze that. You need to, as you do that, once you analyze that, you can minimize your investment risk. And obviously, once you, that, that is, you have less risk in acquiring a going concern than you have on something that's not working. 
You see, there's potential risk that can, it can be the inflation of goodwill element. And uh, like we said, a negative reputation, uh, which may have been inherited from the previous owner, unless you can quickly go in and uh, understand the negative reputation that's there and you move in quickly and you, you assure clients, you assure the market, if you can do that, acquiring a business like that can be powerful and it can create a, a powerful tool for you to invest in that kind of business. You know, in, in, in Zimbabwe, this is important in terms of uh, assessing risk. It's very, very important. I can't under, I can't emphasize it, uh, overemphasize it. You know that there's a, a story of, um, it happens all the time. Businesses that uh, go in and buy another business and instead of having value increase, the actual value decreases. I, I remember in, in Zimbabwe, there was a situation where they were, um, there was this, uh, I think it was CFX uh, a bureau de change, which uh, some very aggressive young white guys and who went and they, they wanted to convert into a bank. They had made a lot of money from um, a bureau de change and they, 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 they went and bought Century Holdings. Where Century was a bank which was already trading a commercial bank, which is trading in Zimbabwe. And they thought now we are going to ride on this license. They have a number of branches that we, we are going to do well, but they, they, their due diligence did not pick up that there was a massive hole in century. There was a big black deep hole. So because their due diligence was not done well, they lost money. So CFX, the financial services then, which was the major entity, it lost a lot of revenue. The, the century guys, they made their killing, made their money, and they, 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 they went out. But the, the guys who inherited, they, made, they, 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 they lost quite a lot of revenue. So it's important to assess the risk if you are buying a business. Very, very important. I can't underscore it enough. Do your due diligence. Do not be too fascinated with wanting to acquire because others have made significant mistakes. You see, once you, 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 are, you are starting a new business, you, as the promoter, you are going to oversee various business requirements from incorporation, licensing, statute registrations, establishing networks, supply chain, marketing, research and development. And all of these uh, are required until you get to sale. So, but if you buy a business that is already in existence, and particularly if you do a good, a very good due diligence and you, you find a gem, do not be in a hurry. Be willing to walk away. Then you can focus more on business growth. Actually, just uh, uh, in this past month, we, uh, we, we saw a business which was on sale right here in Jobek and we, 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 it kind of fell in something that we would have been interested in. And we, 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 we reached out to the owner and we said, look, the guy was immigrating. And uh, when you looked at the website and what they were saying, it looked like it was a very good business, very good opportunity. And uh, we, uh, it was in the training space and we, we felt it was going to be, to be good. But when we went to, so we said, look, before we, we even asked for paperwork or anything, can we just do a site visit? We went on to the site visit and we were shocked. This business was no longer a going concern. The, the guys were just sitting there waiting for potential buyers of the business. And they, just from hearing their talk, they'd been out of business for quite a while. So really what they were selling were just the licenses they had. There was no existing customer base. They, nothing was running and we walked away. You know, it's important. Do not be so engrossed, so excited to want to go and acquire because once you have the buying bug, you are going to buy that business. Instead of focusing on growth, you are going to have to pour in and pour in and pour in and repair a lot of holes that are there. So it's important to do a good due diligence. 
So once you, if you get a gem, uh, th th let, me, let me put it this way. If you're on the market and you want to buy a business, I can assure you that the, be willing to see a number of opportunities and make offers and uh, uh, evaluate a number of businesses before you think of buying. Because if you just buy the first thing that shows up, you are going to make major mistakes and it's going to give you problems. So instead of focusing on growth, you will have to reinvent the business. You have to reinvest, you have to start from zero. So you need to be careful about that. So if you make a good choice, you are going to focus on developing the business rather than the tedious startup procedures. I trust this is making sense. I want to try and make it as practical as is possible, as, as simple and real. Obviously, if you are, you are like you said, um, it's easier to get external funding when you are a going concern. I remember when we bought the steel fabricating business in, in Blawaya, uh, at some point we, we, we wanted to pay the, the, the balance of the, the remaining amount that, that was there. And we, because we were a going concern, we had a, a, a book that was uh, a, a customer, uh, an order book that was running. We had, uh, we had been running the business for a while and it is a track record. It was known in the city. We actually could go and get bank funding to pay off the balance. So it's easier to find external funding for an, a going concern business you buy than it is to fund a startup. Because banks prefer to finance existing business because they have a performance track record. They can evaluate the financial records of the company to a certain its potential growth and this repayment capacity. But when you are looking at a, a business where you are starting, in the case of a new <clears throat> business, they have to rely only on estimates and the promoter's capability. You see, both acquisition funding and working capital finance would be relatively easy for an existing business. So it is important for you to be able to, to do that. You know, when you are acquiring a business that is ongoing, you particularly, I, I, I like being creative with, with financing. You know, when, when we bought, um, when we went into our dental practice, you know, one of the things that we did was we just thought, you know what? Uh, remember, I, I, I told uh, the story elsewhere that we made an offer on a building. So we knew that this was a dental practice, which was built as a dental practice, which was renowned. It, was, it, it had been um, in existence for almost 30 years. And people knew it is in a prominent, a premium location in, in Harare. So we made an offer to buy the building, but we knew that although the guys were, uh, we, we, we were retiring, we knew that we would have residual flow of customers as they left. So, so we, 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 we went in and we took a mortgage to buy a building. But in reality, we are not buying a building, we are buying a building plus a business. Then we persuaded the, 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 the guys who were selling because they were about to retire. I said, you know what, we, we are starting, we are small, we are not going to use the whole building. Why don't you just lease a portion of the building? So they leased a portion of the building. And so, but what was I doing? I was trying to draw business because I knew that most, these guys were, were, were close to retiring. They were not getting new clients anymore. So any overflow of clients would flow over to me. And as they retired, we had made an agreement to say when they retire, their clients will move over to, to, to our business, which was, so we were acquiring clients while we are buying, we, we acquired business through buying a building. And we used the mortgage, long-term financing to buy a business, which normally would not happen. So you need to, you can be creative when there is a going concern capacity. 
And you see, in, in creative finance, what, one of the things we actually did is we, we then said, once we persuaded these guys to stay, because the, you see, we, we got a mortgage, we put in a deposit plus a mortgage, but we still had a slight shortfall. So when we persuaded them to stay, we then said to them, you know what, guys, um, since you are staying, you are leasing. Let's agree on a lease for a year. And then we deduct your, your year, full year's lease from the acquisition of the building. And that way we reduced again the money that we were supposed to pay. Then the balance we paid from our own business. So you can be creative, but the key point is that when you buy a, an existing business, it's easier to have funding. So in our case, because we, when we were buying this building, we, we convinced the mortgager that, you know what, the, their dentists were there. We didn't even tell them that the dentists were retiring because they, they had said they will continue for a few years. So we said, look, there's revenue flow. There are these rental, there's from our own business. We can do this. So when you have that, it helps you to, uh, to be able to fund much easier. Remember, I talked about that, that whole trucking business that, we, that we, we were about to buy. We looked at it, we saw the synergies that it had, and one of the ways that we were going to fund, we realized that they, had, uh, they, had, uh, they, they were selling the business plus the land. So we, we, we went to, 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 again to a, mortgage, to a mortgage house and we said, look, we were buying this land. So we said, guys, let's structure the acquisition primarily is an acquisition of property, a landed property. And we, so we, we, we did our deal and we, we were about to, to transact and the bank was kind of interested. Then at the last minute, the economy turned around and we couldn't attend, uh, nose dived, and then we, we couldn't transact. But the, this is what I'm saying. I'm saying, look, the, be willing to use the leverage of external funding. I, I trust this is making sense. Remember, you are, this is a pathway of creating wealth. And in a pathway of creating wealth, you are, you are thinking and say, how can I leverage things? How can I maximize? How can I do certain things that can help me achieve what I need to achieve? Of course, if you're buying a, an existing business, if they allow you to use their trademarks and so on, and the, that brand value is important. But don't assume that you are able to extract value from the brand value. Here is an example. I think in, in Zimbabwe, Ma, uh, Masawara, which is owned by uh, Shingai Mtasa, uh, they, they bought um, uh, BP Shell and uh, related service stations in a massive transaction, an incredible transaction. And they, they, they bought it, but uh, for some reason, uh, which is quite unusual because uh, Masawara is very generally very shrewd and sharp. But for some reason, they didn't see that um, they, they, were, they were not given the trademarks. So they maintained the BP shell name and logo for a while. And just down the line, they were hit by litigation from BP shell for infringement of um, uh, the trademark. And that's why they had to quickly turn and then they called it Zua and they, they, they changed the logo. But if you look at the logo, it's actually like the BP show, remember it is a sun, so that's, a, that's what they used. But, but they had to sell the business eventually because they could, the, the amount they wanted to settle, that the, it was a litigation that happened. So don't assume, if you are buying a business, be very clear about the copyrights, the trademarks, the, the goodwill, the patents, the trade secrets. Make sure that you, you assure yourself that they are included in the purchase. And if they are included in the purchase, make sure that you are protected. If they are excluded, make sure that you don't violate them because that can result in litigation. So it's very important to be aware of those things. But you see, if you, uh, once you have taken the precautions that we talked about in terms of brand value, you see, once you buy a business like this, that brand value is important. You see, by purchasing an existing business, you, you as a buyer, you will have access to the intangible assets which can be used to leverage for the potential value of the business. But you need to be sure that you don't pay a too heavy a premium. Because whenever businesses are sold, if there is a brand value, they'll try to, 
to include it. So make sure that you understand that you are not exposed. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I hope this is helping you. You know, when you buy an existing business as a wealth creation channel, you can inherit experience and resources. You don't have to start by looking for the, all the people you need. You, 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 you inherit the competences. So in most of the existing businesses, the key employees have adequate knowledge and experience in the operations. And the, so you must be able to exploit this. You, you must be able to, to, to work with this, but it is important let me emphasize right here. You, you see, I, like I'm telling you, I'm telling you the advantages, but I'm telling you the downsides so that you can manage those downsides because that is very important. You see, the steel fabricating business that we bought, it ultimately went under and we had to dispose it or to liquidate it. And the reason was, this issue of experienced resources. There are two mistakes that happened that we didn't see. We were too excited. We didn't see. We didn't see how there was a risk here. The first was there was an engineer who was the general manager who was running the business when we were negotiating the, the deal. And immediately after we we paid the deposit and we, the, we discovered that the GM, the general manager, the engineer, left the company, which was unfortunate because we were really counting on him. And he left the company. Unfortunately, when we found out, he made a, a mistake in that he was anticipating to get a certain bit of a certain portion of equity in the business. And then when the business was sold, he, he was disappointed and he left. And, and yet in our minds, we kind of uh, it established a rapport and we, we really liked this experience resource. And he was a mining engineer and, and so he was a structural engineer and we are into, um, into this um, steel fabricating structure or steel fabrication. And he could easily have spoken to us because we had established a relationship to say, look, if you are acquiring, I am willing to stay. This is what has happened. This is how I've been treated. Uh, I am willing to stay if you do this and this, but he didn't, so he, he left. So be very careful about change of critical stuff during the phase of purchase or after you've paid the deposit. You must lock them in into the agreement. For us, we didn't even, I mean, we didn't even assume on that. We, we just assumed that it would be okay. We didn't even think that this guy may leave or any of the experienced staff would leave. So we, we acquired a business and we lost some of the critical staff and that was unfortunate. So we need to be careful about that. But the, the, the major risk was actually not this guy who left, but it was the operation manager. Because unknown to us, the operation manager had been with the business right from, from startup. And this guy was posed a major risk because he was the business. You see, when the, the business owner died and, and the, the wife took over, this guy, he knew everything about the business. He was the marketing manager. He was the operations manager. He was the one responsible for the designing. He was the one responsible for everything. The business all ran around him. And we didn't know that he, he, he inwardly, he actually was, he was thinking that the business would be left to him. So when it was sold, he was not too happy. And he was colluding with the finance manager, although they acted as if they, they disliked each other. So we started realizing that this guy would undermine uh, whatever was happening. And you would make decisions. I remember at one time we had a, 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 quite a significant problem with um, uh, clients. And uh, in, in terms of the economy was bad and we, we didn't have uh, jobs. So we, we said, look, most of our staff are contract workers. And th that's how the, the business was structured. 
they would always release, the, they will not renew contracts while they are waiting for uh, the business to, uh, to pay. When, when, they are, when the business is low, then they will call them up when the business, uh, when there is uh, their orders and so on. So when I said to him, look, let's reduce our payroll. Let's not renew. You would say, oh, no, no, we have this major job that is about to come up. We can't afford to do this. And so we, 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 we incurred a lot of salary arrears. And unknown to me, it was deliberate on his part. Because in his mind, he wanted to create a situation where the staff would then um, uh, create a labor dispute. And through that labor dispute, their, their salaries, would they will make a demand what they were owed to be able to acquire the business. So he would run the business. But I didn't know that. And so a lot of things were beginning to happen. And so there was this massive vulnerability. So it's important to say, while there are experienced resources, make sure that you are not vulnerable. You may need to take a closer look. So we paid a heavy price because of that, because we didn't understand that dynamic. So experienced resources are great. If you can retain these resources, it allows for faster growth of the business. You see, whereas if you are a new business, you are starting from zero. But it's very important, I can't emphasize it enough, to say carefully assess the human resources before assuming them. And particularly refuse to inherit their issues of terminal benefits. You have the, have start new contracts. Have the, the seller liquidate all their, their outstandings. You see, in most businesses, there are people who put in their relatives, who put in their friends, people who are put in, not because they can perform, simply because they are family. Now, you don't want those people, people who are not competent, people who are not qualified, by making sure that they are paid off. Number one, you are reducing your liability going forward. Because if uh, you inherit all these people, you can imagine, we, we were acquiring a business, this steel fabrication business. We're acquiring a business that had been in existence since 1969. And we're acquiring that business in 2010. And some of the people had been with the business 20 years. Now think about the terminal benefits, the gratuities that you would need to pay if that, those people were to leave. So you need to carefully assess the human resources and ask them to pay off their gratuities and their terminal benefits, and then you start new contracts. And so those new contracts insist on probations so that if you need to terminate, you can terminate within the probation. That will help you a lot. So identify the critical skills that you need to retain identify their motivation, speak to them, engage them well before the business, before you acquire, because that is important. Because if you don't do that, it's going to cause you problems. So you need to be able to take a look at that and make sure that the kind of uh, experience stuff you are inheriting are people who are aligned to where you are going. And you don't have a concentration risk like we did to say there's one person who did everything and this person was hostile to our agenda. So instead of the business acquisition generating you money, it can sink you. We pumped a lot of money into that business. As a matter of fact, we even had to go and, and, and borrow money from, from the bank uh, against our property. And when the business went down, we had to continue 10 more years paying for an asset which you didn't have. So it's very important to do due diligence. It's very important, particularly because for us, the problem was with this, uh, the, this guy, this HR. As a matter of fact, they, let, let me just finish the story so that you understand the importance of assessing the HR, even if the critical people, you, you understand that. So when we, when we got this business, we wanted to bring in our own guy. So we brought in our own guy who was going to be general manager and uh, he was compromised at some point because these guys, they knew. So they neutralized him because they were industry insiders. They neutralized him and, uh, and he had to leave. But so when we now had a problem, uh, the, we couldn't pay. The employees took us to labor. I then realized that, oh, when they took us to labor, 
the day we were going for our first hearing, the operations manager who was hostile to us, he then terminated a number of people so that they would be angry, they are aggressive, and people were un insecure, un uh, insecure. And so in the negotiations, it would be very difficult. When I realized that, I said, you know what? We need to go into uh, voluntary liquidation immediately. So when we went to the meeting and they thought now they're getting the business and they, 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 that's when we discovered they met our lawyer there. And, and our lawyer said, oh, we have a liquidation certificate and all litigation is ceases. So they couldn't get the business. So we then had to kind of unwind and dispose and liquidate the credits and all kinds of things. But it was because of poor assessment human resources. So if you are inheriting a business, the having expert human resources is great, but make sure that you don't make mistakes. Make sure that they are aligned. If you think they're not aligned, make sure you get rid of them. Now, another thing that is uh, an advantage when you deal with uh, um, purchasing businesses is wealth creation pathway is that you will find that generally sellers will never enlighten you on the weaknesses of the businesses or where the problems are. But once the sale is done, you can actually talk to them and say, and they will tell you where the areas of potential growth are, where areas of improved are. So the, you can call them in and you can draw from them the areas of pain for the business and for the industry. As you engage them, befriend the seller and you engage them, they can help you. They can actually be an unpaid consultant and that will help you a lot in making sure that you take the business forward. So critical things that you need to bear in mind when you are dealing with, uh, when you are acquiring a business, you need to ask some key questions, questions like, why and what are the reasons for the business being sold? What is the history and the reputation of the business? What are the industry trends and patterns? Who are the, you, you, of course, you don't want to buy a business which somebody is leaving because they already see that there is no future. I think th this happened with uh, a, a lot of our commercial banks in, in Zimbabwe. You know, the, the banks like Standard Chartered, Barclays Bank, they knew that a lot of their outlying banks were there because they were funded by FAMI. As farmers closed, as, as the land acquisition, they, 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 there was not much business. So the, the, the guys started selling. And our brothers, the indigenous bankers, they went in on a buying spree. They were buying businesses, buying business, buying business. But they didn't see the trend to say, you are, the, the thing that kept these branches working is no longer there. So understand the industry trends and patterns. Understand who are the customers? Who are the suppliers? Who are the competitors? What are the running operational costs and overheads? Are they sustainable? If they are too high, is there something that you can do to manage them? Can you know, who are the employees? How many are they? Will they stay? Would you want them to stay? Which ones do you need to, to release? What are the profits? What are the assets and liabilities? These are questions that you must think about as you are, as you are acquiring that business. Then two other critical things. First one is when you do your due diligence, take a closer look at the accounting. Do an accounting due diligence. That is thorough. Do not just take at face value what people are telling you. You know, it, it reminds me that uh, of a, a, a transaction, I think some of you will know when Kingdom bought Mikos and it became Kingdom Mikos and they had the right to acquire 51% and, and they were running the businesses and uh, Nigel and his team, they were excited. But as they went into the, into the business, they then realized that the Mikos family, they had transferred a lot of money out of Zimbabwe, some say illegally, and they distilled it in South Africa. They also wanted to buy, to use that money to buy a, 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 a hotel that had been placed, that had been purchased 
under the Mikos group, which was in Cape Town. So they are buying, they're using money which came out of Mikos to buy a Mikos asset, but then they, they run it outside the business. So they were transferring value. So the, 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 this is what caused a, a significant a fallout between Kingdom and Amigos. And that fallout resulted in the demeanor of those two. But you see, when you do accounting diligence, you need to pick these things up because for them, the, the, this, this is what was happening. And a lot of people in Zimbabwe actually suffered from this where white people would sell a business. Then they transfer the business either out of the country or they'll transfer it out of the city. They continue with their business, they become a competitor, but they, they actually used you to, you to, to, to fund them in to start again. So it's very important to, to, be, to be careful in terms of the accounting due diligence. Then of course, this, the final thing in terms of due diligence that you need to be careful about is tax issues. You don't want to be, to have tax liabilities after this guy is gone. Make sure you clearly cover your back and make sure that you, you are clear the tax liabilities, all liabilities are covered. So as we just zero down to close, I think buying a business is a, an incredible way of wealth creation. We have bought a number of businesses in our, uh, during our, our lifetime. We have made mistakes. We have won on some, lost on some, but we, I believe that this session has been practical enough to help you understand. But so somebody will say, okay, how do I find a business? Okay, the years, very, very quick rundown. You, you can find them from in classified ads. Gumtree, for example, business for sale South Africa. You can use business brokers like Aldis and others like that. Or you can buy businesses you are not on the market by asking professionals if they know who might be selling. Bengas, lawyers, accountants may know who we, is selling. You can, you can approach owners of appropriate businesses and ask if they know a, of any business for sale. They may be the ones who are selling, but if I asking them if they know anybody who is selling, if they are selling, they will tell you. And then, so those are different ways that you can find a business. Now you need to price the business well. I'm not going to talk about really the pricing, but it's, uh, you need to make sure that it's priced well. You need to make sure that you don't uh, get too excited and you, you pay overly for, for the business. Make sure it's well priced. And you, because remember I said, you, you make the money at the transaction level. You must buy, buy an undervalued business. Just like when we bought a, a dental practice by buying a building. It was like a re, reverse engineering ourselves into buying a business, but we, pre, we, we set ourselves as if we are buying a, 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 buying a building. So it's important to be able to look at this. And I trust that this has helped you. It gives you some insight. It gives you some thoughts. It gives you opportunities. I, as I close, I just want to say, particularly within Celebration Church Johannesburg, I believe this is the time to be buying businesses. If you feel like God has called you into business and you feel like you, 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 you don't want to start, you can start your own business, but you can get a franchise like we talked about, or you can go in and say, I bought this business, and but do the due diligence. I think this is the time. There are lots of business that are going to come to the market, but you need to know why they are selling. You need to know what they, to establish that they have value and you need to go for it. So we are going to meet, we are going to switch into a Zoom session where it's interactive, where we, we discuss, where we engage, where we, we go deeper, we, we, we want to hear your, your thoughts, your inputs. So right now, the, the, the Zoom link is being posted and you can join us in that discussion. Uh, until then, may God bless you and we meet again next month, same time. I hope this time I'll be able to have a panel of people who can walk us through how to finance the businesses that we are acquiring. What are the opportunities in the South African market? What are the opportunities and how can you finance your business idea? Thank you so much and God bless you. And we meet in the Zoom interactive session. If you are new and you have joined us and you want to, be, to continue to, to, to be in touch with us, uh, just uh, uh, inbox us your contact details and our team will get in touch with you. Thank you so much and God bless in Jesus' name. Amen.